If you find yourself in this dire, dried up, ghostly predicament, don't give up, my friend. Instead, go on a beauty quest. Hello, moon babies. It's Molly. Welcome. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. It's been quite some time since I introduced myself on the channel. So if you are new here, my name is Molly. I am an artist and the author of Art Magic, How to Become an Art Witch and Unlock Your Creative Power. So thank you so much for stopping by. So in today's video, what I'd like to share with you is something very close to my heart that informs my spiritual practice, informs my artwork, my lifestyle, <laughs> my worldview, and that is beauty. The importance of beauty, your birthright to beauty, and how if you are feeling dried up, perhaps uninspired, hopeless, or beauty deprived, how you might go on a quest to restore your essence and your birthright to a beautiful life. Story time. So about 10 years ago, when I was preparing to graduate from art school, I had a conversation that I will never forget. So the scene, I have all of my paintings prepared for my thesis exhibition as I'm about to graduate. And my professor has this very pained grimace on his face and his arms crossed. And he very tersely says to me, you can't expect to make good art that's just beautiful. That lacks depth. You need to make art that makes people think about something. I was so caught off guard <laughs> by his comment that my sort of stumbly answer, but honest answer to that was, yes, but what if I want people to think about beauty? Beauty lacks depth. I disagree. Beauty lacks depth? I've thought about that conversation and replayed it in my mind again and again for years. So an institution, a temple essentially, dedicated to teaching and spreading the value and impact of the arts, i.e. the imaginal, the beautiful, the creative, reports that beauty lacks depth. No matter how untrue the statement beauty lacks depth may be, we're bombarded by this false message from all directions and it begins to feel true. If this is the signal we've been receiving, is it any wonder that our hearts are starved for the crucial nutrient of beauty? Our culture in the West tends to put beauty through the ringer. What is the usefulness of beauty? How do we put beauty to work? What does it do? What is beauty worth? How do we measure beauty? How do we manufacture beauty? Is beauty productive? How might we exploit beauty? Is beauty even necessary? Beauty is petty. Beauty is a reward. Beauty is superficial, decorative at best. What does it mean when our communities, institutions, and individual souls relinquish their birthright to beauty? I think about this a lot. What happens to us physically, mentally, spiritually, and magically when we are beauty deficient? A kind of beauty starvation. A kind of beauty scurvy. I think we become ghosts. Except not the normal haunty kind of ghost. We become a different sort of ghost. We don't become souls wandering around without bodies. But bodies wandering around 
without a soul. We become dried up. We become hopeless. We become numb. We become the living dead. Beauty, in truth, sustains us. Beauty is deep. As deep as the ecstatic heart. As deep as the sea of the psyche. As deep as the quivering dream of the anima mundi. And beauty belongs to you. Beauty makes us happy. Beauty gives us meaning. Beauty gives us tonic. Beauty gives us solutions. And we can absolutely recover our sense and proportion of beauty and amend our ghostly situations. But unlike a sad ghost story, where the unhappy soul finds justice and then passes on to a different plane to find rest and disappear, when we recover our birthright to beauty, we come blooming back to life. If you find yourself in this dire, ghostish predicament, don't give up, my friend. Go on a beauty quest. How to go on a beauty quest. One, say out loud, I am on a beauty quest to restore my essence. Two, look for beauty. Three, notice and appreciate beauty. Four, repeat, repeat, repeat. Go on a hunt to find that which is not pretty, but beautiful precisely because it is not pretty. Notice something that gives you hope. Visit, stumble upon, or remember a place that inspires awe. Find an object, so not a plant, animal, or person, but an object that is most certainly imbued with life. Ponder something ancient that makes you feel eternal and ephemeral. Notice something fleeting that one is lucky to catch. Come in contact with an object, place, or being that arrests the eyes of your heart and makes you stop to wonder. Discover a forgotten, simple pleasure that brings you joy. Use your beauty quest as a treasure map and give your soul the vibrant, deep, life-affirming, mysterious, joyful, beauty nutrition that you need and deserve and is your birthright. We're calling this a quest because quest is much sexier than scavenger hunt. And besides, we're not scavenging for beauty, moon babies. We're not picking at bones or searching for crumbs. The table is set and we are feasting. Go forth and feed your soul with beauty and feel alive, my friends. I really, really hope that you enjoyed today's beauty chat, moon babies. And if you would like to go on your own beauty quest, you can find a printable version. <laughs> of the beauty quest prompts over on the blog. I printed mine out as a little tag to stick in my grimoire, but you could easily include it in your notebook, your planner, your own grimoire. 
<laughs> so if you'd like some printable goodies, make sure that you visit the link in the description. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for the Moon Baby mailing list so you can stay up to date on free illustrations and coloring books and meditations and course updates, all the magic in the studio. I want to thank you so, so much for being here, for watching, and for being you. And until we speak again, moon babies, which on, which boldly be well, and walk in beauty, my friends.